This is a more in-depth look in the behind-the-scenes action of sports. I'm here interviewing instructor Mr. Colin Pillow, which also serves as the director for ASU TV sports, sporting events, basketball, football, baseball, and anything with A-State TV media. He's the one that's directing it and also instructing the students. How are you doing today, Mr. Pillow? Doing well. Uh, first things first, what is what is your detailed position for A-State in regards to backstage sports? Well, for sports, other than being an instructor in the Department of Media, I primarily am the liaison between our college and athletics, primarily dealing with live sporting events, as you just mentioned in your introduction. Um, I coordinate make sure we have schedules set up so that we have enough students to help be crew members for the events that get streamed live or and or get put on the video boards in the convocation center and the football stadium and then in the past i've also helped with production of coaches television shows and other types of special events they do like uh, if they have a change in a head coach or something and they do a press conference many times i'll be there to um, either shoot it and stream it live or to help them out in some capacity. Can you go into detail of a day of an event? Like, break it down, like, when you show up to how we get it set up to everything. Like, what's the process? Well, I'm going to actually start a few days before an event because we have a production meeting over in athletics. For instance, this week we have Thursday and Saturday basketball games. Wednesday we'll have a production meeting with athletics to where we all sit around the table go over a script, which is what gets shown on the video boards, PA announcements that are read during the game, before the game, at halftime, after the game, things like that, any special promotions that happen. Um, For instance, we have things like uh, a ball kid at a basketball game where they may be on the court being recognized as the ball kid of the day, make sure that's shown, what camera's going to show it, that kind of thing. Uh, And we talk about those. If we're going to have a special singer for the national anthem, all that happens during a production meeting, on usually on a Wednesday, depending on if all of our games are on Thursday and Saturday. Once we've gone over that information, made sure no one has any questions or issues with it, when Saturday rolls around, um, this season's been a first for us because we've had doubleheader basketball games because of the conference. All of our conference games have been doubleheaders. M- women and men play on Thursdays. They play with only about 30 minutes between games. On Saturdays, they play with as much as an hour and a half or so between games. But generally what happens is if a game starts, let's say, at uh, 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon for a women's game, I'm usually there by 1 o'clock, and I um, show up and I have a list of pass, uh, a list of crew members and and an envelope full of passes, media credentials, for the crew members who are going to work the game. There's a lady who sits inside one of the entrances that uh, crew members use. They go in, visit with her, sign the sheet. She issues them a pass, and then they proceed to go on into the arena and uh, decide where it is they're going to be working any particular game. And they have uh, you know quite a little while to get adjusted to it if they need to become familiar with the equipment, uh, if they just want to visit with each other, talk about what's going to happen, that kind of thing. Meanwhile, up in the production booth, I'm usually up there with uh, other people from athletics who run the video board and do some of the replays for the uh, athletics department and produce highlights and things like that. We're up there getting ready to make sure all the commercials that are supposed to play during the game, all the promotional pieces, um, still graphics, animations, things like that are all prepared. And... Hopefully that's all ready to go uh, well before, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes before a game. That's not always possible. Sometimes there are some last-minute things that have to be produced, and they still need to be added to the playback. So all that's happening during roughly the two hours before the start of a game. And once everybody's in place, hopefully all the crew members have shown up since we have um, students for the majority of our crew members. And sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, one may not show up. We have to try to cover for them. Things like that happen. But once a game begins, we're, we're ready to do it as much like television as we can, with the exception of announcers, which by agreement, the announcers are the radio team who are, or the radio announcer who does it for the Red Wolves Sports Network. Can you explain to people what's going on behind the scenes and what's being told in the headset 
to give them a better perspective of what's going on between the director and the camera operator for events. The main way this is different from television is that we're also doing a show for the arena audience, those people who are in attendance in the seats. And since they have the big video boards, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that a television audience wouldn't see and a television crew simply wouldn't be involved in. Unfortunately, we have to do both. We're trying to stream it for a television audience, but also during timeouts and things, we are trying to entertain some of the fans who are there and they're making use of the video boards to do that. So we're having to follow a script. The game is unscripted. We can't predict, you know, someone's going to score 20 points that day or someone's going to get injured or what have you. What we do know is a game starts at a certain point. There are four guaranteed half uh, timeouts in each half. There's a fifth one in women's basketball for uh, media in the, in the second half. And that's the scripted part. So when something like that happens, we immediately have to kind of change our hats from being a TV crew to an entertainment crew for the video board. So we may suddenly have to do a kiss cam, or we may have to do a selfie cam where we're trying to get shots of people's faces who are going to appear on the video board inside what looks like a, a phone to where it's being, you know, they're taking a selfie. So there are two main productions going on. There's the game itself, which is the action of the players and the coaches and the fans, that kind of thing. And then during any time we have an opportunity, like timeouts, halftime, pregame, and postgame, there may be times when we're having to do something that's totally scripted just for those people in attendance. Before we wrap up, talk about the, the end of the game and how we close down and the ending process for today. How do you close out for the day? Well, when the game is over, uh, once the officials have declared it officially over, there are no challenges to where they have to review anything or what have you. The teams are going off the court and those kinds of things. We're done and basically ready to tear down the equipment, put it back in its place, uh, which is primarily cameras and cables. Uh, we have an engineer who is responsible for making sure that happens. Uh, however, the camera operators um, typically will take their cameras up into the booth where they're stored between games. But that arena is so versatile. One night it can have basketball. The next night there could be a concert or a rodeo or a monster truck event. So the basketball court doesn't even stay down on the floor all the time during basketball season. And so we can't just leave camera or cables or things like that run there because it has to be out of the way. Even if there is a game the next day, they still want everything pulled back. Um, on rare occasions, if we had a, a Saturday-Sunday basketball game type of thing, we have been allowed to leave our cables there because they said we don't have anything between those events. But, but typically at the end, all the equipment's put away. We stop streaming. Uh, Dustin uh, Sullivan, who is a uh, digital media manager for athletics, goes down into the press room and records the uh, coaches' post-game and player post-game comments for putting out to media. Uh, he'll also edit the highlights of all the replay footage that we capture during the game and publish that out either late that night or sometime the next day to all the different media. And we just basically check all of our uh, passes back at the door so that everybody returns them to the lady at the table. I grab those on my way out and I'm ready for the next game, which means a new roster with different people on it. And we're ready to just do it all over again. Like, well, that wraps up our interview. Hope that gives you a better insight of what goes on behind the scenes, a better understanding of what goes behind the scenes of sports. Hopefully this interview gives you a better insight from someone that's a director and more professional in the industry to help out other students. Thank you for watching.